and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over, well, the amazing Amazium and more specifically an extremely interesting science experiment that I got the idea for from the Amazium. So just before I actually get into the science experiment today, I'd like to talk a little bit about my trip to Arkansas. That's right, just around a week ago, I actually landed back in Toronto from Bentonville, Arkansas, or Northwest Arkansas. Uh, and while I was in Arkansas, I actually had two keynotes. One for IBM, oh so, sorry, one for Walmart uh, at their David Glass Technology Center, which is basically the Walmart technology headquarters, I guess you could say, uh, and also Grit Studios in Bentonville. Uh, so those were, of course, really interesting. I talked about my cognitive technologies as well as, you know, IBM Watson uh, and a lot of that interesting stuff. But the day after my keynotes, I actually got to go to the Crystal Bridges Art Museum, the Walmart Museum, the Walmart Cafe, there was ice cream there by the way, uh, and the Amazium. And that's what the video is about today, the Amazium. Now if you're not familiar with the Amazium, well, I mean you should be, but the Amazium is this really, really great place in Bentonville, Arkansas, uh, where, ki where it's basically targeted towards kids in order to try and get them in interested uh, and really show them what it's like to work with things like IoT uh, and science uh, just like this video is about today uh, and of course it's also uh, it's just generally very interesting for kids and as you know I absolutely love to you know support initiatives like STEM and STEAM and so the Amazium is an absolutely great place for that and I really do love the Amazium's initiative and of course Thank you very much to my friends over at the Amazium, uh, specifically Sam Dean, uh, for gifting me this nice little t-shirt over here. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's a great t-shirt. Uh, and as I said, the Amazium is just an amazing place for kids to learn about all these types of topics, science, technology, uh, electronics, uh, and more specifically, today I'm talking about science. In fact, I actually got this video idea over here. Uh, from the Hershey lab at the uh, at the Amazium. So at the Amazium, there's actually this Hershey lab where they do a lot of uh, science experiments related to Hershey's products. Uh, and so while I was there, I actually coincidentally got to uh, got to attend this really uh, interesting science experiment. And this time, it was about icebreakers. Uh, and so we're going to be using icebreaker mints for this experiment today. So, this is going to be a very, very interesting experiment. And now, without any further ado, let's get straight into the experiment itself. So now, just before we actually get into the science part and why it works and how it works, let's actually do the experiment. See what it does, and then I'll tell you why it does what it does. All right, so now, basically, in order to begin though, today, what you need to have in terms of materials would be, first of all, warm water. Okay, uh, just a normal warm water. Uh, of course, you'd like some sort of like test tube-like container, something like these little chambers here with caps on them. Uh, and so just label these one and two and mark uh, around the same point on these bottles uh, to where you'd like to fill your water up to. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, apart from that though, you're going to need icebreaker mints. Uh, and so you're going to need two kinds. First of all, the blue kind. And so these are the uh, normal icebreaker mints here. Uh, preferably though, you want these blue mints uh, in tablet form, like these red ones over here. Uh, but these red ones are exactly what you want, these red icebreakers over here in tablet form. Uh, these are absolutely great for this experiment, uh, and that's what we're going to be using tonight. Uh, but, of course, uh, it would be good if you could get the blue ones uh, in tablet form, although this shape works as well. Apart from that, you're probably going to want some scissors, uh, some plastic bags, some plastic Ziploc bags, uh, as well as sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda as it's called. Uh, so you're going to need a little bit of that as well with a little spoon uh, to use the baking soda with. Uh, and apart from that, you're going to need a little hammer to crush your icebreakers, and I'll talk about that in a moment as well. And of course a funnel to insert stuff into your little test tube-like container. So once you've got all these materials gathered, come right back to this video, and of course, let's begin the experiment. Alright, so to begin this experiment today, what you're going to do is you're going to take your test tubes here. Uh, and just before we even get into that, actually, I just uh, remembered here. So 
what you're going to need to do is take some plastic Ziploc bags uh, and put four icebreakers uh, into each bag. Okay, so you're going to put four uh, blue icebreakers into one bag and four red icebreakers into another bag. Uh, and once you've got these here, you're going to want to crush these icebreakers into a very fine powder. Not very fine, uh, just like this regular powder. And so I'd recommend, you know, just taking these icebreakers, using something like a hammer or a cr little crusher or really whatever you want to use, and just, you know, hammer at them and crush them uh, as much as you can until you get to a very, uh, not very, but uh, a slightly fine powder. Now, of course, though, that would take some time on video, and instead of spending your time on video today, I decided to go ahead and crush it all for you uh, on video, uh, off camera, sorry. And so as you can see, I've got, oh, sorry, uh, wrong ordering, uh, as you can see, I've got two little groups of powder here. Uh, this one is red, this is number two, and this one is blue, this is number one, and so this is what we're going to be using for our experiment today. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do today, now, I mean, we don't need this hammer anymore, so we can just keep that off to the side. But the first thing you're going to want to do today is, of course, fill your test tubes to water to around this mark over here. Uh, now, it doesn't need to strictly be this mark, really. It uh, just depends on how many tablets you have. You're probably just going to want to eyeball around over here on my little container here. I might include some more uh, information about that in the description, but you're going to want to fill it to about over here on this type of a container. Uh, so, let's say I open up my little container, uh, and we've got some uh, some water here, and if I just uh, face this towards me and put a little bit of water in up to the mark, exactly up to the mark. Okay, so I have filled this up with water. Just going to uh, not. We don't need to cap this back off. So that's that. So number one is filled with water, and now number two is about to be filled with water as well. So I'm just going to uh, do this. All right. A little bit too much water, but it's all right. So again, okay, we don't need to cap it off. So now basically, what we're going to be doing now. We're done with our water, so now, basically what we're going to be doing is we want to take this icebreaker powder, I guess you could say, and we want to actually dissolve it into these two containers here. So you want red in number two, blue in number one. Doesn't really matter uh, about the ordering, uh, but that's how I usually like to order it. So we can move this to the side. Uh, and now let's actually begin putting these icebreaker uh, powders uh, into our water. So what we're going to do now is let's say we've got this funnel. Now this funnel is going to be very convenient for this uh, because of course we don't want our powder going all over the place before it goes into our uh, little test tube. So what I'm going to do here is, as you can see, we've got this little plastic bag, take my scissors, uh, and I'm just going to cut a little opening uh, into the plastic bag. And once I've cut this opening, as you can see, this is a perfect place for the icebreaker powder to get out from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little test tube-like container, uh, and as you can see right over here, I've got my funnel inserted uh, into this little uh, a container, and I'm just going to, uh, if we can get the camera here, uh, I'm going to insert like so, and as you can see, most of my icebreakers have gone in perfectly, uh, and as you can see, we've now got this icebreaker water ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cap it off, uh, and I'm going to First of all, cap that off. Now what we're going to want to do is you want to going to uh, dissolve as much of this icebreaker juice uh, into the water as you possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend around 30 seconds uh, just shaking this um, this container, uh, and I'm probably going to speed up the video now so we don't uh, spend too much of your time. So I'm going to speed up the video now. Alright, so we're done speeding up the video. As you can see, I've got most of the icebreakers uh, practically dissolved, I guess you could say, into this water. Not completely dissolved, really, uh, but most of the icebreakers have been absorbed into the water. And I have a literally blue icebreaker water here. Uh, so we're going to set that to the side, and let's focus on number two for a moment here. So now number two, as you probably guessed, we're going to be filling that up uh, with our red icebreaker powder. Uh, so again, in order to do this, we're going to take our funnel-like object, uh, or a funnel technically now, uh, and I'm going to um, basically take this red icebreaker powder that I've got prepared here, 
Then I cut a little opening into my plastic bag. Okay, so we've got this opening. And this is absolutely the perfect place to pour our icebreakers out from. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my funnel. I'm going to make sure this does not spill. And I am going to just place this into my test tube uh, type of container here. Make sure it doesn't touch the water. And then I'm going to take my red icebreaker powder and put this into the funnel here and have that in turn go through oh <laughs> some icebreaker powder there and as you can see we've got the funnel uh, that has put our red icebreaker water in here so now again r rinse and repeat what you're gonna do is you're gonna cap off this little container here and shake uh, so now i'm going to continually you know shake this for a moment uh, around 30 ish seconds so i will be back in 30 seconds All right, so we're done speeding up the video now. And as you can see, we've got this uh, slightly more dissolved powder here into this water. And now we've got test tube number one and test tube number two uh, filled up with this uh, little icebreaker water here. Now let's actually take a look at number one, first of all. Now number one is full of our blue icebreaker powder. Uh, and let's just see here, as you can see, we've got a little bit of baking soda, okay? Uh, and let's just say, we were to put a little bit of this baking soda here into our test tube. What would happen? Well, let's take a look at what would happen for ourselves. So now, if I just open this up here, as you can see, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my funnel once more, all right? Uh, and I'm just going to place this nicely into the little container, make sure it doesn't touch the water. And I'm going to take a, quite a bit of baking soda as you can see over here, and I'm going to take this slowly up to my funnel, and I'm going to drop it in and let's see what happens. So if we can just put the camera here for a moment. As you can see, as you can see, I've put in all that baking soda. And now, I'm just going to cap that off, and as you can see, nothing's happening. Alright, we've put the baking soda in our blue icebreaker water. But as you can see, nothing is happening to this water. Nothing interesting is happening. Um, hasn't, you know, generated any foam or anything, really. That's not very interesting, okay? But what do you think is going to happen if we take our red icebreaker water? Now, this might be more interesting. Let's see. Now, I'll explain the science behind this in just a moment. But let's see what happens if we put some baking soda in our red icebreaker water or our sour icebreaker water. So, if I just open this up here. Now see, this is going to be the interesting part of the video, uh, where you actually get to see the uh, interesting baking soda part. So if I take some baking soda here once more, and if I just, as I had shown you already, I'm just going to take this baking soda, uh, and I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to drop it in, and... As you can see, this happens. Uh, now, as you can see, the word for this will be foamed up. This water over here, this icebreaker water, right as we put in our baking soda, it foamed up. Uh, and so, let me actually explain what happens. So, if we go back to our whiteboard here, now it's the science part. You've seen the fun part, now let's talk a little bit about the science. So if I take my marker here, uh, okay, so we've got our black marker, so, now, What's happening is we've got baking soda, all right, or sodium bicarbonate. And this is N-A-H-C-O-3. Okay, this is our sodium bicarbonate. Now, inside of the blue icebreaker water, we've got no acids. However, inside of our red icebreakers and our, ice, our red icebreaker water, we've got three different acids. We've got citric acid, we've got malic acid, and we've got tartaric acid. Now, whenever something basic, like baking soda, combines with something, something acidic, and in this case we've got three different acids, a reaction happens, and this reaction will actually give off, well, uh, if I were to, um, uh, not enough space, but basically 
this will give off, first of all, H2O, as you know, water. It'll give off carbon dioxide, and it will give off some sort of salt. Now, what does this mean? Well, for a moment, though, let's take carbon dioxide. What's happening is when any base reacts with any acid, they're going, it's going to create H2O, or water, and salt, salt water. However, baking soda is a special base. It has CO3, it has that sodium bicarbonate. And so what's happening here is due to it being a special base, it actually creates CO2 in this reaction as well. And so not only are we creating salt water, we're creating CO2 as well. And that's actually why you saw that foam coming out of our little container here. The reason was because our baking soda is combining with the acid inside of that water, which was combined with the icebreakers, uh, and it was releasing CO2, which was trying to escape all that water in the uh, actual container. And when that CO2 tried to escape, it generated little bubbles, sticky bubbles, uh, because of the sugar. Uh, sorry, uh, that's not related at all. It's just, you know, those bubbles that are generated because of the CO2 trying to escape the water. And that became our foam that was generated almost instantly. Uh, and that's why this foaming happened. But let's talk a little bit about the salt now. Now, when any base or any acid combine, or when they react with each other, well, they're going to generate a salt. But every base and every acid, when they combine, they'll generate a different salt. Uh, and since we're combining with three different acids, each acid is going to generate a different salt with this base. However, let's just say citric acid, for example. Okay, uh, if we were to combine, if whenever in that water, a few molecules of this sodium bicarbonate and a few molecules of specifically, um, so if I were to write N A H C O three plus citric acid. Okay. Now specifically citric acid, just that one acid, it'll actually generate trisodium citrate. So what's happening now? is, of course, when, when some molecules of b sodium bicarbonate uh, actually generate, um, uh, touch a few molecules of citric acid, uh, the salt that's generated specifically would be trisodium citrate, al citrate along with H2O, uh, sorry, H yeah, sorry, H2O, H2O, along with carbon dioxide, due to the fact that we've got this baking soda and not a regular base. In fact, that brings me to my next point. When any base and any acid combine, and when they neutralize with each other, whenever they get into a neutralization reaction, if you've got the exact same quantities and the exact same concentrations, meaning the exact same strengths of, these acid, of this acid and this base, once they combine, What's going to happen is you're going to be left with pure salt water. And in this case, since we've got uh, baking soda and citric acid, we're left with trisodium citrate salt and water and carbon dioxide, but we'll talk about that later. But let's say you've got a little bit higher quantity or concentration of acid and a little bit lower concentration or quality of baking soda, or sorry, a, a base. What will happen is when they combine, it'll generate acidic salt water because there's a higher amount of acid. The, uh, the equal amounts of acid and base neutralize each other, but there's that little bit of acid left, and that becomes the acidic salt water that's generated. However, the same thing applies for the base. If there's a slight bit more quantity or concentration of the base in the mix, and a little bit less uh, of the concentration or quantity of the acid, in the mix, what's going to happen is it's going to generate basic salt water. And again, it depends on which base and which acid you're combining that will, uh, that will determine the actual salt that is produced. But in some special cases, w with the case of sodium bicarbonate baking soda and sodium carbonate washing soda, those are some of the only bases that will actually produce CO2 in the reaction as well, which is what gives us that really interesting a little foaming uh, reaction, which is exactly what we wanted. And that was what I had to say for this video. And that was 
the entire science experiment. Of course, I really do hope you enjoyed the science experiment, though. Of course, I'd like to say again a big thank you to the Amazium for giving me the inspiration to create this video and the video idea as well. And of course, thanks very much to Sam Dean for this great t-shirt. I absolutely love it. Uh, and of course, I love the concept of the Amazium in general, and I really do think uh, that if you were to ever visit the Amazium, you would absolutely love it as well. It is targeted towards kids, but I mean, for sure, it's very, very fun for adults as well. Uh, so, that's going to be it for this video today. Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, of course, if you really do like the video, please do consider sharing, uh, putting a like down below. Uh, of course, if you think it could help anybody else you know, your friends, family, please do consider sharing the video as well. But if you really, really do like my content and you want to see a lot more of it, please do consider subscribing to my channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. Of course, though, if, you've ha if you have any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below, email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com, or tweet them to me at tajimani. Of course, thank you very much for your time today. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.